えー、と、えーあ、皆さんこんにちは。こんにちは。Uh, my name is Frederick and I'm from Taiwan. And my slides will have a translated version, so you can get the translated version. Okay,、uh, in this session, I will talk about how we promote、uh, ODF and liberal p i e c e in Taiwan. Yeah, and At the beginning of this session, let's see the background, the background story of this, of this session. Okay.、Uh, the story actually began in 2009.
Yeah, and they have some developers to to uh, fix some bugs for Chinese. Yeah. And uh, this NDC is just start from last year, you know, because they are responsible for promotion here, so they must use themselves. And for others, actually, uh, nothing happens yet. But the above is actually the liberal of this migration map, not ODF. Okay? What's the difference? I mean, for the ODF, you know, when our government uh, tell everybody to use ODF, they have a KPI for all the government. The car has a KPI. The KPI is that our official documents, they have a dedicated format based on SML, extensive KPI, but the attachment can be of all the formats. So the KPI is, that for, uh, for now, most of the attachments are Microsoft format or video or zip. Yeah, so the KPI is to change from the Microsoft format to the ODF in the attachment. Okay, so the KPI is the ratio. Then you mean, I mean, for example, maybe now uh, the ODF, the ODF, the, the rate of audio may be just five uh, percent, and they need to raise it to twenty percent this year. That's that's what I mean for the ratio. So with this ODF, you can see the. Whole Taiwan is much blue, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Iran County still got, uh, this year they got uh, almost 100%. Yeah, yeah they almost banned all the Microsoft format. Yeah. But uh, for, for example, China, the people, their KPI is to the next year. Up, they need to be up to at least 70% to be ODF but in next year. And uh, indeed, they, they have this year uh, above the 30. Yeah, that's, that's the way our government to measure about the migration of all the Okay. That's the progress of Taiwan. So we hope that uh, in two, maybe in one or two years, the whole Taiwan can be green. You know? yeah. Uh, about the central government is still the same only Ministry of Finance because they have already promoted for at least five years. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, here I will talk about the migration protocol. You know, uh, I am now the liberal office migration professional, and the, in order to apply for the professional, we need to read the documents, you need to know that they have a, an official migration pro protocol. If we want to migrate the legal office into an organization, we need to follow, or we need, you need to at least know this protocol. So let's see what is this protocol. This is the original legal office, okay? First, of course, we need to do the analysis, the request analysis, requirement analysis, sorry. This includes uh, how many users do we have, and uh, mostly what do, we, what do they use. For example, maybe they are now mostly, mostly user use Microsoft Word, and uh, some of the users use Microsoft Excel. Okay, we need to know that what's your requirement. Then we start to design this project. Okay, the uh, project management. And, uh, here we have. Uh, Impact test. The impact test means for some important parts or for some uh, for some department they have uh, uh, secret files or important files. We need to solve those problems first before migrating to this organization. Okay. We need to uh, maybe we need to convert the files to the ODF and make sure that it is okay, or even regenerate, rewrite the file, okay, before we fully migrate. Because if you don't solve this problem first, your resistance will be lost somewhere. Because they, 
those files are very important for the, that's called the impact test. And then they start training course. The training course, okay? Training course. Then support. Support is to the uh, software bug base and also for the compatibility issues. Okay, De deployment. And then after the training course, they start deployment. So that means uh, we need to know what you use. We need to pass the impact test. And after the training course, we start, they start to use debugging. That's the protocol. Okay. But the, the important thing is that you, you see here the communications. You can see that always from the start of the project, the migration project, we need to keep communicating with everyone, with the boss, with the uh, department who is responsible for the migration. We need to keep communicating with everyone. Okay, that's very important. We, we cannot uh, say, say that, okay, we have already trained and have trained courses, then, okay, then you just use. No, we need to keep communicating. But that's, uh, this is actually an ideal status. For everything is ideal, go this protocol is But you know, the real, real world is not that beautiful. Usually, people will go with themselves first. And you can see this is what will happen if people go without any help. They will directly download the email office. <laughs> and then they have some use and they'll start to complain. What the heck is it? Okay, I give up, okay. Then they go back. They go, go back to the Microsoft Office, right? Sometimes I call it the Stockholm syndrome, you know the Stockholm syndrome? You were kidnapped, but you fell in love with the kidnapper. <laughs> yeah, so now I call it the Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. Because they, they have not any help. And it, this really happened because uh, one, one of the examples is that there's a, a famous NP, NPO in Taiwan, and they were audited by Microsoft. So at that, those weeks, they have a comment that everyone changed from the Microsoft Word and Microsoft Office to the Google Office, but without any training course, without any help. So everyone is. Uh, they cannot use Microsoft Office that those weeks because Microsoft has come to audit. So everyone is complaining. Everyone is, what the hell is that? Okay, and then after the Microsoft left, they go back. Yeah. This, is, this happens actually almost every day. Yeah. Okay, sometimes the organization maybe may call for some help. Uh, so, you know, there are also some famous commercial computer schools in Taiwan. Uh, yeah, but, but they teach everything, not only. Actually, they teach uh, more preparatory software than free software. Even they teach free software, it's just a project for them. So that will become like this. Okay, the computer school comes and then, okay, the analysis phase is how many cases do you want? Okay. They don't really see what the users want. They just add the organization. How many guys do you want? Then I will have those guys for you. Okay. Then they will have some lecturers read to the end user. Yes. After the training course is end, the project is end for the for the computer school. So they left. You know, and the, the organization's users. Fall into the fall into the face again. They need to do. They need to download. They need to use themselves without any help because the project is over for the commercial computer school. The project is over. So now not not like business. Okay, any problem you, you hit here, any problem you meet here is not like business. So usually, uh, maybe. Uh, two or three years ago, because I, I, I haven't got involved into this so deep. 
girls come to school go this way. And actually, because for them, it's just a project. Okay, until they get the money, they left. So, this is actually what I use. This, my, this photo is what I use. It is different from the original, original protocol. And uh, when I interview with my, my version professional, uh, I told them that what's the difference between my protocol and theirs. Okay. Of course, the first is still requirement analysis. You, we need to know uh, how many users and uh, more, uh, how many classes for right how many classes for calc and for basic and advanced. Yeah. And then still keep communicating is very important. Okay. But what I will do is that I will tell them, I will ask them to install LibreOffice first. But I don't tell them to remove Microsoft Office. Okay? I just tell them install the LibreOffice and set your file association with ODF to open with LibreOffice and uh, Microsoft Office format use Microsoft Office. Okay, why, did, why do we do this way? Because uh, we don't want them to change very soon. We want them to change gradually, you know. Use it this way, if they receive any ODF file, they can open it automatically with LibreOffice. Okay? And so, uh, if they receive some official documents with attachments, and then now they, uh, the, some, some government started to use ODF, they can open it correctly. And we, we, we didn't have them to change the habit that time, but then we will start to have change codes. Yeah, training course is easy, but then at the same time, at the same time, we do the impact test. That means we help them to convert the important files uh, to, uh, to work normally, to, to keep them smoothly migrate to the OBF. Then, the most important is this, open support. This open support is what uh, I told the ERA county. You know, the most difference is between my protocol and the those computer schools. Because I will keep supporting you even after the training course is done. Okay, that's what I focus on. So this support includes uh, helping to start their programs even face to face to start their to, to, to teach them after the training course. Yes. One to one face to face. This, support, this kind of support. Okay. And uh, so ERA County goes this way very well. So now they, they still have some problem, but most of the pro most of the problem they can solve themselves. And only a few which they cannot solve them will pass to me. Okay, that's about the protocol. So next. Let's discuss about the communication phase. In, the, in, this, in this phase, I'll tell you what we tell people, how we communicate with people, and uh, especially with uh, officers, with sports. Okay. Uh, in the communication phase, we mainly communicate with the responsible department but then we will hold at least one or even two big sessions directly to users in this organization, directly to users. Actually, uh, just this year, maybe I have already have more than 30 or 40 sessions for this. Okay. And in these sessions, I will use three different aspects to kill people, mainly to make them sick to see about this problem. Okay. The first, I compare between ODF and OOS. Not compare between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice. No. I compare between ODF and OOS. But a, a, a funny fact is that actually people are using Microsoft Office, but they don't know what is OOS. They don't know. They have no idea about how to do So I need to tell them that 
for yourself with part B O C X. This X is always available. Okay, I have to tell you that. And uh, we can go to the wiki page. We can to show the ODF and the OSFL. And you can see the ODF is international center, ISO center, right? It is open spec. It is made by the ODF committee. And the OSFL is also open spec. But it is developed by Microsoft only. Okay, I can show that on the wiki page. You can, you can see that too. Okay, so uh, because we want to use an open spec and international standard to be our national standard, so actually both OPF and OSL meet our requirement. Okay, then at this point people will ask, so why don't you use OSL? Okay, using OSL, we don't need to change our habit. It seems to be everyone that, but then. I will tell them, okay, now assume we are using all as our national standards, then we'll see what will happen. Then I will show them this time. If we choose all as okay, we show them these are the main office suites, actually 2007, 10, 13, and 16. These versions are in Taiwan still have many people use, especially 2003. You know, before, uh, before I go to Ira County to my graduate office, they are using 2003. I don't know about Japan, but in Taiwan, these versions are, they are still many users. Okay, and uh, in this time I met, I marked 2013 and 16 a threat. Do you know why? This is a very important reason to mark it a threat. Do you want to have a guess? Okay, I tell you. Because 2013 and 2016, they cannot be run on Windows X. <laughs> <laughs> Is it important? <laughs> yes, it's very important. Why? Because there are still many users using Windows XP, <laughs> including government, enterprise, schools, really, really. For example, Ilan County. Last year, when they start the project to migrate the office, I, I can tell you a story because the officer told me they are still using Windows XP in 2003, mainly most of the users. Okay, of course they want to upgrade. So, uh, uh, last year or even before, they, they made some budget and they want to change to the 2013. So they got the 2013 to try and they made the first problem. It cannot run on the Windows XP. So what does that mean? That means if we want to use 2013, we need to upgrade Windows XP at the same time, right? We need second budget to upgrade from XP to Windows Eight, because no Windows Seven at time. Okay? Yeah, that's here. That's here. Microsoft only don't sell Windows Seven license. Okay? Then they got another Windows Eight to try and they made second problem. Guess what? Because Windows Eight cannot run on their own machine. <laughs> so they need some body to do what? to change the old machine to new ones. So just only inside the Iran County government. For those users they need more than uh, more than one hundred million twenty dollars. Yeah that's a problem because there are still many users using Windows let's see. And then I draw around here. It's about the time here now. I ask people, okay, if we want to choose OOXML as our standard, is it correct, is, you can see, is it correct that all the users need to use the same version of Microsoft Office? Is that true? If not, 
we will have a problem with hot tolerance. If we use Office 2030 to generate document files, and can we open it with 2007 or even 2003? Can we? The answer is no. That's the feature of Microsoft Office, you know. Across two generations, the file format will be incompatible. That's the feature, not bug. They just want this way. Because you will upgrade this way, right? But if we don't unite the version they use, it's, it will have problem passing the document to you because maybe the receiver cannot open your file. It's not just, uh, I, I, I don't need to change my habit so I, I can keep using to the screen. No. If we want to use all XML, you cannot use to even use to the because it doesn't support all XML, right? And uh, if we are using 2007, you may need to upgrade at least to 2010 because you may not open the file generated by 2013. So at this time, if we want to unite the version, which version should we choose? I mean, people say, which version should we choose? Uh, Andy, all the answers we can have. If we choose 2013, then we have the problem, I just said, <laughs> right? The same problems. Uh, if we choose 2010, but now Microsoft does not provide 2010. So how can we do that? So actually, after analyzing, analyzing these problems, people will start to understand that, oh, using OSML is not as easy as they think, especially to the organizations, to the government, to the nation. Okay. It's not just, oh, we, we don't need to change our habits, but to the government, to the country, it's not a good thing. Okay. That's the first aspect. The second, we talk about the open center. Open center. Open center, open center we, we focus on, uh, compared to the proprietary file format. Okay. I use uh, my own, my friend, he's an artist. Uh, and his story is that he, he was soft image to do his creative artwork for maybe six or seven years. But then in 2015, the Autodesk announced that soft image stops, right? So he had the problem that all his works, all his creative works in the past six or seven years cannot be opened anymore if his soft image is, he, he, he cannot, if he cannot use his Currently use so image, so image because its file format is closed. It's closed, so he has no way to convert to the to, to for example to a format that Brenda can read. Okay, so at that time before that, all his work are zeroed if the software is gone. So at that time he started to promote open services because. Using open center, we don't need to worry about the software. For example, open office now discuss about if they want to start developing, right? So if the, you have a lot of files generated by open office, will you worry about that you cannot open those files anymore? No, because it uses open center. Okay, that's a simple concept. Okay? About the service, the international trends, I use several uh, examples. The first is Italy. In September, uh, 2015, September, Italy Defense announced that they migrate to the legal office of OBF yeah, for uh, 150,000 PCs. Okay? And I think this example proves the safety of legal office. Because it all defense. Of course, they focus on the safety, but focus on the security issue very much, right? And they can choose the world if that proves, because many, many people will ask, if we use open source software, would it be secure? Right? Some, some people say that, hey, the source is open, so uh, the hackers can easily find the, 
find the hole, but I told them no. Actually, because it's open and it's still very transparent, so it's, uh, when they found a problem, when they found this security hole, they will fix it very soon. And that's the proof of the safety. Okay? But the second one, in, in this year, March, okay, the second one, I think it's a very important point, very important indicator for telling people why we need to use ODF. In this March, the NPS in Sweden, it is responsible for research, for research uh, some protocols, some platforms, and some standards for Sweden government to use. Okay, they will suggest these standards and tell the government that you can, if we want to do this, you can use these standards. This month they announced 46 IT, IT open standards, including ODF, including HTML5, and SVG, and so on. The news goes here, but it is, there is one thing he didn't say. In this list, no OOXML. My question to people is, why not? Why not? Okay, I haven't contact with the people in the Sweden government, but I believe that the answer must be after the research for the OSML, they think OOSML is not suitable for Sweden government to use. Or they can put in the list, right? It is also open spec, right? It has a very strong development strength behind the OSML. But why didn't they put in the list? There must be some reasons they say it's not suitable for government use, right? So I tell people that now our national policy is to use ODF. Why? The reason must be the same is why UK want to use, why Italy want to use, why Sweden want to use. It is not just a policy that want to save the cost. It's very important to tell people that this policy is not just want to save the cost. Because it's because using ODF is very important for government to change to change uh, to for several the documents, so to exchange the documents. Because using ODF, we can make sure that after you receive the file, you can always open this file. You can always open this file correctly. By using OSML, I cannot prove this. Okay, so I believe that that's the reason why Sweden government don't and didn't put the OSM into the list. Okay, after analysis to here, usually people will start to not. Yes, yes, okay. So finally, I will talk about the attitude. You know, they will always have problems, but I don't tell them that how to solve the problems. I told them how to face the problem. You know, it's different, okay. Uh, uh, when, we, when we have the experimental sessions, the officer from NDC, they always help hold us that to tell people how to solve those problems. They say, no, actually we need active. You see, uh, here we all play with the open source software for a long time, right? And then you can see a lot of people just, just like my <laughs> protocol, I showed the protocol. Uh, when, they, when people who uh, use free software, and they will very soon start to compare. Oh, so difficult to use. How the hell is it? Okay? They will very soon start to compare, and they will quick criticize, and then give up soon. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I asked them, uh, OK, then how would you react if you are using a proprietary software? It seems that. People would not be so mean when they use a commercial software or proprietary software. So I made them recall some good memories. I show them this. Okay. This season, you are very familiar with, right? 
you, you, you use it all the time. But have you ever made this? Have you ever seen this screen? Uh, huh? Have you ever seen? <laughs> ah, okay. I ask you all. If you see this screen, what will you choose? Do you choose to report the question back or not? No. No, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> nothing there. Yeah, nothing No difference, right? <laughs> Will you, will someone receive the Microsoft phone call after you report the no, question? No, no, of course not, right? Any difference with before or not? No. no. So how will, you, how will you end with this? Yeah. I don't care. How, I, I, I ask people, we usually sound it this way, three kids come from Earth beat, right? And then kill the process, right? We always use this way to solve the problem. We don't call Microsoft for help. Right? How is this? Yeah. You, you mean this? Yeah. How will you, how will people react? You don't know. Of course, the most powerful button in the computer, right? Power button. First. Reboot. But if still this after reboot? Okay. We install. Call the vendor, right? Okay, for all the flow, for all the trouble we met in Microsoft Surface, anything? I ask people. No, the answer is no, definitely no. So, why and how we solve this problem? We always choose to find a way to solve that ourselves, right? So, since this system, this software, you use this attitude to solve the problem yourself. Why do you? Uh, why are you so mean to the free software? Why are you so mean to the of this? If you got any problem, can you find a way to solve it, or you just complain and, and uh, give up? That's what I ask people. Then the important thing: the correct attitude. Free software is amazing because we can together make it better. Okay, this photo, this photo is in uh, Tech9 in the LibreOffice company this year in Brno. Yeah, you, you should be there, right? Yeah. Okay. There are there are many developers here and uh, together together, and I'm here. <laughs> Oh, you see the mosaic, yeah. because, <laughs> because I asked my friend to take a photo, but he take from here, so all my friend is here. So I use the mosaic to, 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 to mask my friend. Okay, okay, this is a very uh, uh, senior developer. We, here, we, we are solving a problem about showing the date in the cap. Okay. We are solving the old problem here. So I told people that because we are start to check, uh, to migrate uh, to migrate and promote the office, and uh, they are users find this problem. So I get this problem to the Libra conference to hack night, and we solve it that night. We stop it that and it is patched back very soon. So I tell people, use it to somewhere, use it in your office, use it in ODF. If we have problems, you are not alone, okay? You have a way to report. You have a way to solve it. If you cannot solve it, if we cannot solve it, we have international developers. We can make it better, okay? So that's the attitude. To this. Okay. So the conclusion. The conclusion is that uh, okay. When we want to migrate, even migrate liberal office okay, into an organization, but it is important that we talk about the format instead of software itself. If we talk about the software, if we talk about using liberal office, then it will be easily. Okay, back. Even the user of the Microsoft. Okay. 
But if we talk about the file format, um, just like what we I analysis to you, uh, using OSML and using ODF, why we choose ODF? It's very important that it can make sure that the receiver of this document can open it, even if it, if he does not have the software, he can download it freely, right? So I can make sure that you can open it. By using all SML, we cannot make sure this. It's very important, especially for the government exchange or, or other private exchange. Okay. So we talk more about all the of part. Of course, actually, well, my good legal office. Use it because ODF is the native format of the legal office and of the office, right? So actually, we are still my good legal office. But we don't talk much about the saving cost. We don't talk much about the comparing the legal office and the Microsoft office because it will always fall into the trap. We just compare formats. Okay. And some people will ask, uh, will ask that, okay, if I use Microsoft Office, they can save us ODF too, right? I said, yes, but never do that. Never do that. Why? Because Microsoft in Taiwan, okay, Taiwan, uh, Microsoft CTO in Taiwan, in, in, uh, in a conference, they, he admitted very publicly and uh, even happy that when Microsoft Office saved us only a file, we add something into that. Okay, that's Microsoft CEO automating this. And happy, okay, really happy. Because he says that, because I, I add that because it will meet the uh, fix some feature in the Microsoft Office. But the question is that the thing you add will make others unable to open it. But of course they don't care, right? Of course Microsoft don't care about that. But I will tell you that no, don't use Microsoft to save us unless unless they can really obey the the spec. They can really so uh, in November we have all the conference in Paris. The one of the conclusions is also this Google document and uh, Microsoft Office and the API world. When they send us ODA today, miss some important properties. And uh, also, when we can try it to save us, uh, to use Microsoft Office to save us ODA and open it with Microsoft Office and Libre Office, you will see different results. So, I will always tell people don't use Microsoft Office to save because it does not really follow the spec of ODA. If it is, if it follows the audio, I say using Microsoft Office to say it's okay. But the, the fact is that they will never follow. They will never follow this. Okay. So that's the second. For example, ODF to, to use software that can generate audio format correctly. We don't directly say the office. We say use the software to generate audio format correctly. So now in Taiwan, we are going on a new project. We will make a office suite derived from the labor office. Okay, that's for the government use. But we will tell users that no, I don't really need you to use this to generate ODF. You can generate ODF file with any software you like. But the file need to pass this validator. You need to show it on it correctly, then you can send it out. This validator is actually LibreOffice, right? So if we, but we, we still tell people that you can use any software you like. We don't limit you to use LibreOffice, no. Anything you like, but you need to pass my test. This test will prove that the receiver can open it correctly. So this way, Microsoft will have no way to attack because I don't need the user to use anything, right? You just need to pass. And, and I have a very, very important reason because I need to, I need to make sure that the receiver can open the file correctly. So, and then, of course, I hope that after some tests, after some attempts to 
to use, uh, they will find that I'd rather use this to general files. It will be the easy way <laughs> to, to general files. Okay, but we don't we don't tell them, we don't force them to use this. That's our project. And, and of course, in this project, we will also uh, uh, have some bits for LibreOffice and uh, even maybe even make an iOS version of Reader because we lack of LibreOffice Reader, ODF Reader in iOS, right? Maybe we can use the government's uh, budget, government's money, and uh, we can we can uh, develop and release uh, iOS Reader. That's what our high officers want. That's that's the office wants. But of course, we can contribute back so that all the liberal users can use it. Okay, that's uh, our main touch. So here's my uh, here's my speech. Okay, thank you. ありがとうございます。で、これからあの質問とタイムについてたいと思うんですけれども、どなたか会いますでしょうか。質問は日本語で大丈夫ですが、僕の下手な英語で訳されることになるので、英語でできる人は英語と日本語両方言って。僕の
Eto, ah, here. Yes. Yes. Do you have an idea of what, uh, what I, I don't know what the uh, ah, pre previous slide Yes. Ah. This one? Yeah, previous. Ah, okay, 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 okay. okay. Yes. Eto, what I see is that uh, Eto, MOE plan de Eto, dimension が 100% にやり通りクリストのマイグレーションが完了していると。普通考えれば、えっと、デベロップメントカウンスルーなんで、えっと、いわゆるエコ,エコノミカル、アドミニストリオブエコノミカルとか、あとテクニカル、科学術の章とか、そういうところが優先になるのかなと思ったんですけども、MOF が優先あの最初に完了している理由っていうのもしご存知であれば教えてもらいたいです。Why am I fast? So, so why? So, this, so, this one is、uh, already.、Uh, okay, oh, why, why is the memory so early? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, why is it? Because、uh, I know、uh, I know the director of the information center、uh, oh. last year. He is a very,、uh, we say, he is a.、Uh, Um, like Richard Stone, you know, <laughs> he believes in free software very much. So, when he is a director in the innovation center, he, you, he asked the people in, in the Ministry of Finance to use Open Office that time. Yeah, all the training course, and they, you know, Mark Home, he works in the、oh, yeah, innovation yeah. center. Oh, really? Yeah, so he, they even fix some bugs with the CCK and coming back to the The open office, the real office. Yeah, he was in the information、oh, center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so they had several, two or three developers. Yeah, I, I, I know the director last year. And now he's retired. He's retired. But all the, all the taxation, the custom, the, and the other department, he, he, even, he even tell the other department that if you have budget to buy Microsoft, I will sue you. <laughs> <laughs> Because you don't need to spend this budget.、Oh. No. He, he's very, very,、uh, he insists very much about this. So that's why they can uh, uh, successfully earn so early because the director is very firm on this.、Oh. Yeah, I, 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 know, I know him that he is very, he is actually a very interesting old man, but he told me that. The, the, the user there will be very scared of him because they cannot use Microsoft. They cannot make a budget to buy Microsoft Office. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He will not pass this.、Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ah, one thing I want to say is that I'm going to say 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 that でえー、と彼はあの CGK の縦書きとかルビ回りのパッチとかをすごいたくさん書いてる結構アクティブなコミッターでディブロスのレンダリングエンジンって相当広かったんですけどそのひどいコードを読み解いてですねあのすごい重要なバグを結構直してくれたやつなので今度一緒に遊びに行きたい遊びに行っていろいろ話を聞きたいなと画策しています今年のリブレフカンサーカーファレンスに来てましたはいあんまりあの翻訳はしてませんが、<笑>じゃあ時間かな。<笑>はいはい時間。えじゃあちょうど時間になりましたので、えー、これで質問あの締め切りたいと思います。えー、っと今日ですねいろいろあの台湾の状況あの詳しくあの説明されたんで、えー、フランクリンの方に盛大な拍手で終わ,終わっていただきたいと思います。<笑>フランクリンパーティーにも来てくれるよね。You join the party, right? Ah,、huh? yeah, sure, of course. So, だからあの